This video is sponsored by Pathfinder LED. Welcome to part one of my 2021 trunk swap, where I'm planning to swap out this trunk on my 2018 Goldwing with a larger trunk from a 2021 Honda Goldwing. The trunk kit that I ordered from Honda came in gray with a black trunk lid, so these parts all have to be repainted to match my motorcycle. Now today I'm going to turn Cruise Man's kitchen into Cruise Man's garage. I'm going to be working on my island. And what I have to do is I have to remove the liner from the new trunk lid so it can be painted. Now if you subscribe to my Goldwing maintenance video series, you already know how I remove the liner from the trunk lid. So I'm not going to go over that here today. If you do need to remove your liner from your trunk lid, I do have videos that cover that in my Goldwing maintenance series. So I'm just going to kind of speed this up to get past this process. Once I have the liner removed from the trunk lid, now I need to remove the two little inserts because those have to be painted separately. There's too much of a risk that paint would get down in that little narrow crevice between the trunk lid and the insert, so it's probably a good idea to paint these separately. If you watch till the end of the video, you're going to see that this foam gasket around this insert poses a little bit of a challenge when it comes time to paint because we ended up masking that off and I'll tell you how we dealt with that later. Now it's time to take all these parts and have them painted. I was very fortunate that I have a good friend who also rides a Goldwing, Dale Jones, and he just happened to have been the paint and body manager for a local Lexus dealer. And he's had a very long-term relationship with Axo Noble, which is one of the world's leading producers of paint products for the automotive industry. They've been around for over 100 years. They've been around forever. When we arrive at Axo Noble's facility in Fort Worth, I meet Juan Pimentel, who is their technical instructor. Now, here's what this facility does. They bring painters in from all over the country, and they train them on how to use their paint products. As you can see, they're very well stocked with everything you could ever want in the paint business. And they have a first-class state-of-the-art paint booth as well. And the computerized mixing system for the paints is like nothing I've ever seen. Dale had previously done a spray out on this little card, and he has a lot of numbers uh, that Juan is going to enter into his computer. So to mix up the proper color, uh, the proper white base coat for this particular paint job, and it's all computerized. Very, very cool the way it works. As Juan led me into the mixing room, you can see the selection of different colors and different types of paint they have here. So what we did is we, um, from the computer, mm -hmm. uh, we send the formula to the scale. Okay. So now I have the formula on the scale, and the only thing I have to do is touch layer one, because this is a three stage. So layer one, I'm gonna hit start, and I'm gonna put a cup in it. And we're ready to go. So it's asking for the first toner, and that's the amount right there. Okay. Toner number and amount. Juan selects the first color to be added, which is the base for the white color. And he explains that the scale is completely computerized, so it measures how much he pours into that cup. If he accidentally pours too much, it will recalculate all of the other colors he needs to add to get the proper color. You'll notice as he adds the paint to the cup, the number on the scale begins to go down and the goal is to get to zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's our first toner. So when I hit next, and it's gonna ask me for another toner, so I'm gonna grab that one. So this is our second toner. Which way you need to tint something. This tells you that when you're looking at it at an angle, that it has a blue pitch. I see. 
Juan adds in the blue toner until the scale reaches zero. Black. That's for next honor. After Juan adds the black into the mix, he mixes everything thoroughly, and this paint so is ready to be sprayed. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's going to be our first uh, step, and then the second step is going to be uh, ground coat, which is the white color, and then the first step is going to be our, our pro, which is the mid coat on the on the three stage. Okay. And then we'll let it flash uh, 15 minutes, and then we'll apply three coat. We call it water-based activator, but it's not it's not water. It's not, we cannot just use any any water. It's, it's it has its own um, mix in there that, okay. that we gotta use. Um, but yeah, it, that's what we need to activate all those toners and make sure that that basically it's gonna dry. Okay. Yeah, if we apply it just with no activator, it'll stay wet for a long time. Right. It'll right. Oh, it won't. Yeah, it's too thick. Yeah, it's too thick. So this is a first toner that's gonna go in there. If this is white. And it's really small amount, so I have to be really careful on this one too. Now Juan is mixing up the mid coat, which will be the pearl, like a metallic that will go on top of the base coat. And because we want we want the light to go through the through the layer and and reflect the ground coat. That's what we need. So you can see the amount. This is big. Juan decides he needs a little bit more than what he originally entered into the computer, and that's no problem for this digital scale. I'm going to go over a little bit on this one, because I want to mix more than what I sent to the scale. So this is a good um, way, a good way to mix more if I have enough room. So I went over. I'm going to recalculate this one. I'm going to say yes, and now I have a different amount. After mixing in a few more ingredients, Juan mixes everything up for the mid-coat and then adds the activator. Now Juan has everything he needs to finish the paint job. Before we can apply any paint though, we have a little work to do. All of the parts get laid out in the prep area of the shop and Juan grabs a water-based solvent to thoroughly clean every part just to make sure there's no grease, uh, fingerprints, anything like that. And of course, Dale wants to get in on the action as well, so he's cleaning the trunk lid while Juan cleans some of the other parts. Now, each piece has to be scuffed up or sanded using red scotch brite. And Dale told me that this red scotch brite is about equal to a 320 grit sandpaper. To make them easier to paint, I had attached the trunk inserts to a 2x4 using some screws so that we can tighten it down and keep them stable. Now all of these parts are going to get secured onto these racks that are specially designed to hold smaller parts for painting. One secures the parts using zip ties to the racks. A very effective way actually to secure these parts. The parts are all then taken into the paint booth where they will be sprayed and one just makes sure everything is secure. This is a pretty cool rack because it allows him to lower and raise that part because he will spray a little paint on the underside of that trunk lid. Juan goes over each piece with a tack cloth and some compressed air to blow off any particulate that might still exist. Now this floor of this paint booth also has suction so it's drawing everything down and out of the booth and now uh, we use another solvent to thoroughly clean all the parts one more time just to make sure there's no grease or fingerprints or anything on the parts before the paint process begins. Now it's time to get suited up and get into the paint booth and get to work and Juan even gives me my own jumpsuit so that I can join him 
while we're in the booth spraying. Actually, he's going to be doing the spraying. I'm just going to be filming. And even a protective hood, which has an air supply, so it's always got positive air pressure coming through. Once we're inside the booth, Juan begins spraying out some test panels to make sure he's going to have all the colors correct before he starts spraying the parts themselves. He'll spray one with two coats and another one with three and then compare them to the trunk parts themselves. And once again, Juan goes over every part with a tack cloth and that compressed air to make sure these parts are super clean before he starts painting. The first thing to be sprayed onto each panel is a sealer or seal coat, uh, sort of like a primer, and that just covers up the original color and gives the paint, the base coat, something to stick to. And as you can see, Juan decided to use a white tinted sealer, which I think is kind of a good idea actually. One thing I did find rather interesting is at no time during this entire process did I ever smell any paint fumes. I guess that's a testament to how good this paint booth really is at drawing out all of the particulate matter that doesn't stick to the parts. Once that seal coat has had a chance to dry a little bit, Juan begins spraying the first coat of the white base coat. There's actually two coats that go on. I'm not going to show spraying both because it pretty much looks like the same thing. And there's a relatively short amount of time in between applying each of the base coats. I'd say maybe 15 minutes to let it dry a little bit and then we're right back in the booth spraying the second coat. After the first coat goes on, Juan takes those test panels in and compares them to the paint on my Goldwing. Now he did three different spray outs, one with one coat, one with two, and one with three. And you can clearly see the difference in the shades. Apparently two coats is the way to go. After the two coats of white go on, it's time for the mid coat. This is the pearl coat that contains the metallic finish that gives the paint that sparkle. Okay, so we've shot the base coats and the mid coat, which has the pearl in it. And now we're getting ready to shoot the clear. We did a check with the spray out to make sure there's a good match. It looks really good. And uh, the next step is to shoot the clear coat. After the mid coat has had a chance to dry and flash, Juan begins applying two coats of clear. Now these go on pretty close to each other. As soon as he finishes spraying these parts and gets over to the trunk lid and the side panels, he goes right back over and sprays the second coat of clear. So there's not a lot of time in between the clear coats. In fact, we don't even leave the booth. And once those two coats of clear are on the paint, then he turns the temperature to 160 degrees inside the booth. Of course, we're out of the booth at that point to let that clear coat cure. And that takes about 30 to 45 minutes. And once that clear coat has cured and is the parts are then completely dry, we can pick them up, touch them. There's no tackiness. They're done. So one of the problems we had was when we lifted the masking tape off of this foam, it tore it uh, because the masking tape is just too sticky. So we're going to have to come up with some sort of foam to replace the foam that comes from the factory. Uh, I think Dale figures he can find a way to do that. So we'll deal with that later. In my next video, I'll show you how I deal with this damaged foam insulation around those little trunk inserts and we'll get a chance to take a closer look at all the parts after they've been painted. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching.